We cross the bay and chat with one of the Miami Heat's most artistic and in-style players. Combs and I don't get along too well, so uh, this is what you get. I call it the pro-nasty. Expressing his interest and colorful personality through social media. Oh, oh my God! You know, it's really my, my way to have a voice towards my fans. You know, I want them to see, like, the real me. Enjoying the city's perks. And look who got it! <laughs> Justice Winslow! <laughs> finish strong, finish strong! Touching lives through his foundation and inspiring words. You know, there's one thing you should do every day is dream. I learned from Justice to keep playing hard and never give up. There is no ceiling on the greatness of this young fall. It's scary to think that he's only 20. I mean, he's only going to get better. Winslow ramming it down. Coaches know when a player is a winning player. It's a great culture, you know, surrounding the Miami Heat, and everyone's focused on how can we better this team in any way, you know, shape or fashion. Inside the Heat, Justice Winslow. Welcome to Inside the Heat. I am Jason Jackson. Justice Winslow's young basketball life has already been a masterpiece. How about in just three seasons, a top high school player out of Texas, a national championship at Duke, and then a top 10 pick of the Miami Heat in the NBA draft. So what better place to talk about his second year here in Miami than right next door to American Airlines Arena at the Perez Art Museum Miami? Because Mr. Winslow has already shown us he has an expansive love for fashion and art. Justice, right on time. Welcome to uh, Perez Art Museum, Miami. Thank you. The reason why we're using this is our canvas, if you will, for your show. You like that, didn't you? Yeah. Uh, you've been very clear about this. You're a big fan of art. When, when did that start for you? Really in college, I had like a, a house I would go hang out with, at all the time, and they always drawing, you know, making music, um, painting, sketching stuff. So that's kind of where it started, you know, I do. I want to walk you through this place before we head inside, beginning with the uh, hanging gardens over here. You look at it, man, it's just such a different what do you see? vibe. I see the inverse of how things grow on Earth. What I love is how they water everything on the inside. Oh, really? Yeah, you see one of the caps off here? Oh, so yeah, you can yeah. see the, little drizzle. the water flow. <laughs> yeah, it's the internal So the, the ones on top are watering the ones down here. Oh, uh, how about? Mmm. Didn't man, go to Duke you, for nothing. Not for nothing. You didn't need basketball. I'm glad you had it. Yeah. But you didn't need it. Now, I understand this is a... Uh, Jesus Rafael Soto design. Uh, this is called Penetrable. Does it, does it take you back to Durham a little bit? No, uh, it's not the right shade it's of blue. It's not the right shade? Not the right it's shade. It's close, though. It's close. It? What yeah, happens if thinking. you walk backwards? Well, back that thing up. Shea Shacks has emerged out of it. All right, you ready to go inside? That was fun, by the way. Interesting. Justice and I headed inside where we found ourselves making music. Can I get a beat? Yeah, I think they just called security. We should keep moving. Justice, I think it's a good place to stop here in front of the uh, red sphere, the sphere road. Mm -hmm. uh, this is uh, it's beautiful. What do you think? What do you think it is? Uh, a, a red circle, I do. What I see mm -hmm. is um, it sort of plays on the idea of there's always someone watching. Ooh. And so there's all these angles around the world, and they always, they all some way reflect back to you. If I'm standing here, I could find a way to bounce it off and, and get back to you. And you're standing way over there. Do I see? I see me. You're not a visionary. I'm trying. I'm not a visionary. For justice, fashion is his art. Describe your style. I'm still young, so I can have a lot of fun with it. Obviously, the hair plays <laughs> a big part. So a lot of, a lot of head pieces lately, headbands, things forever on my head. It's hard, it's hard to really dress up here in Miami, um, but trying to wear more jackets, um, you know, kind of layering things, things of that nature. But growing up, I was so just, just simple, just white tee, black tee, being from Houston, just jeans, whatever, simple. But um, trying to incorporate more colors um, and just be a little bit more vibrant, you know, kind of like the art. With the 10th pick in the 2015 NBA draft, the Miami Heat select Justice Winslow. Your mother shared a little information with us. And on draft night, you were so concerned about your work. Before the commissioner got up there and said my name, you know, 10th pick, I knew I was going to get selected. 
by the Miami Heat. My agent told me uh, like 30 seconds before. So I stood up and fixed my suit to make sure everything was crispy. And so At the I, table, you stood up, tightened it all up. Yeah, so that's what, that's, and off what you go. that's what she's talking about. You mentioned your hair, and it is evolving. That's a great way to put it, yeah. Starting from some of the high school photos when you just had the nice little, little boy fade haircut mm -hmm. to your grown man status in your second year in the NBA, how would you describe that evolution of the fronatic? Um, well, yeah, like you said, uh, growing up in Houston, I had, you know, the south side fade, so super low on top and nothing on the sides. And um, my brother started growing out his hair um, when I was a freshman in high school and he was uh, a senior. And so when my sophomore year came around, I was like, you know what, I want to be like my brother. And so that's when I sort of started growing it out. But Combs and I don't get along too well. So uh, there was never really the whole combing thing. Right. And that never really went down. And so right. this is what you get. It's, uh, I call it the fro-nasty. Fro-nasty? Yeah. I might change that from fro-natic. Yeah. Uh, is this a statement you're making? Is this a part of your entire fashion dynamic, um, or is this its own entity? Both. You know, it, oh, it, it, can, yeah. it can exist on its own, or it can, um, you know, be cooperative with, with other things. Um, but it, it's, it's also a way for me to kind of express myself in a way. You know, I could braid this, I could pick it out, have the 1980s, you know, fro. It's just a lot of things I could do with it, so it's another, you know, element of that, that whole art thing. Welcome back to Inside the Heat. Nowadays, we know NBA players are connected directly to their fans through social media. Justice Winslow is no exception, but he has a beautiful canvas to work as he's providing the pictures and sounds of his life. His backdrop is this beautiful city of Miami. So here we are, perched on this beautiful terrace here at the museum. Right here, basically in the backyard of the office. This is, this is not terrible. What have you most enjoyed about being a resident of this gorgeous paradise we call Miami? Uh, probably the weather, for sure the weather. Yeah. Um, you know, you could be outdoors probably 300 and 63 days out of the year, probably two <laughs> cold days. I got you. Um, being from Houston, going to school in North Carolina, never really got too cold, so um, it's probably my favorite part. Have there been some locations around town that are like, these, these are my spots. Your friends and family come in. Well, not, well, okay, in, uh, in theory. In theory, yeah. Roundabout, I got areas. I would say uh, over there by the University of Miami. Okay. The General Coral Gables, Coconut Grove, Grove area. Yeah. Um, just the campus feel or people your same just, age? Just, just the environment, mm -hmm. the, the trees, um, the grass, the green. That and Wynwood are probably two favorites. Very nice. There he is. Don't just hang around looking for him. Yeah. That's the point he's making. Just let it just rush up on you. Please welcome from Houston, Texas, and forward for your Miami Heat number 20, Justice Winslow. You were over at uh, Marlins Ballpark during the baseball season. What was it like throwing out the first pitch? Uh, it was fun. I was a little nervous. Everyone was texting me, so I kind of just lobbed it. And um, it, was, it wasn't a good throw, but uh, I actually caught a home run from the other team that game, so I threw it back. And look who got it. <laughs> Justice Winslow, <laughs> and he throws it back. I got a good ovation for throwing the ball back. Nice. Way to, way to touch the people. Yeah. Very good. Did you play baseball growing up? Uh, I played T-ball, and then once the balls They're started moving. being thrown at me, I was You're done. Out You're done. It is an art form of sorts, but let's move from actual art, which has been our focus on this show, uh, to the art that you provide on social media. You're not as intense as you used to be. Yeah. Maybe more of a voyeur now, just watching the world. I'm a visionary now. Well, for me, I don't like to post, you know, so much basketball stuff um, because um, basketball, what I say is basketball is what I do. It's not who I am. So, um, you know, I just, more lifestyle stuff, me and my friends hanging out. I got the whole black and white thing going right now on the page. Um, so uh, just trying to be different, trying to, just, you know, bring that artistic flavor to my page. He also brings a certain fur-like flavor, introducing the world to the newest members of his family. I understand the family's growing at the house. Yeah, the 
El Jefe? The puppy is Hef El Jefe and Noah. Noah. And then El Jefe is the new one? Noah's the new one. Noah's new. And then they got a, they just got a, a cousin. He's got a cousin named Kodo. So you keep the bloodlines, you track the family, or you just brought nah, them in, and it's a play cousin. So, El Jefe and do. Noah are my two mm -hmm. uh, American Bulldogs, and then my brother just got a Frenchie. Justice doesn't mind stepping out of his comfort zone either, as he got down in a little social media channel. When you all were aware of the Running Man Challenge, yeah. what was the lightning bolt that inspired you all to actually participate? Because when you and your sister did the Running Man Challenge, I mean, that was special. Um, well, we just wanted to make a video, and so I couldn't do it. She could sort of do it, so we spent probably 30 minutes uh, in my living room. We were just trying to learn how to do it, and so um, eventually we got decently good at it and um, you know she wanted to post it so I posted it on my page she posted it and the rest is history. She's better at it than you are. Yeah. Okay. But one thing Justice is good at is connecting with his fans via his social media. What do you like about the direct connect with fans? I just like that I can really you know put whatever I want out there you know however I'm feeling um, I can kind of display my mood my attitude my personality um, you know, it's really my, my way to have a voice towards my fans. For someone who follows you, what do you want them to get out of their experience? I just want them to feel like they know me in a more personal way. I don't want them to see um, number 20 for the Miami Heat. I want them to see, uh, you know, Justice Winslow, um, J-Dub, Rubby. You know, I want them to see, like, you know, the, the real me. Welcome back to Inside the Heat. Justice Winslow has followed the Miami Heat mantra of being entrenched in the community, be it a organization event where he's stealing the show behind the wheels of steel or on a hospital visit, putting a smile on a sick child's face. It's so much a part of his life, he even started his own foundation with his mother as the lead. You co-founded your foundation and named it after your mother. What is Robin's house's philosophy? It's my mom and my siblings and, you know, good family friends. We do different things with, with kids, um, trying to help them remain active, um, help them with their schoolwork, and help them follow their dreams. Three or four years we thought about doing it. Once Justice, of course, was drafted into the heat and stuff, and that gave us a bigger platform. With the foundation in full swing, Justice hosted his first annual invitational basketball clinic at his alma mater, St. John's School in Houston, Texas. We had about 50 kids. We made them register, write an essay on what they would change about the world. And from there, we picked the kids. And um, you know, we had basketball drills. We played games. Um, but then also, we did fitness. Finish strong. Finish strong. I learned from Justice like to keep playing hard and never give up. While Miami's your new home, you still have a reach in Houston. Why is that important to you? Houston's where I'm from. It's why the, I am the way I am. It's my duty, um, you know, my responsibility to to give back to a city that's given me so much. You know, if there's one thing you should do every day is dream. You gotta look yourself in the mirror and realize that for you, your dream is possible. You have this acronym, you created DREAM. What does that mean and, and how does it impact what you're trying to achieve? Yeah, so the, the acronym is DREAM. Basically, it's dream the impossible, realize it is possible, educate yourself, act it out, and then motivate others to dream. This year, Justice and Robin's House Foundation put DREAM into action by hosting their first DREAM showcase for the creative youth of Miami. What we did was we went to the schools, 15 schools here in Miami, and we went to their music and arts department and we asked for them to give us children that we can put on the stage, do a little theater. We didn't ask for their best students. We asked for the students who really tried hard. It was just a way for them to have a platform because a lot of them don't have a platform. They don't have audiences that, you know, come and watch them. So just giving them that experience um, to kind of motivate them and inspire them to, to keep doing more in the craft. Y'all ready for the next set? Yeah. I feel like really excited, at the same time nervous, but I'm happy that everyone is coming here to support me at, and dancing. I would just tell every kid, you know, that performed and everyone in the audience to continue following their dreams. You know, that's something that, you know, I think is, is very sincere to my heart and very true is, you know, never lose sight of your dream and always, you know, pursue it and, and never give up. I tried your shoes. No, you can try my shoes. <laughs> Miami Heat are involved in a numerous number of community outreach events. Is there a signature event that stands out for you? I like the hospital visits. Mm. You know, they're, they're tough at times, but um, you know, that's, that's what life's about. It's about um, 
you know, approaching those tough, those tough challenges and those situations that make you uncomfortable. We got some gifts for you, buddy. Seeing them here in this hospital, you know, such a tough place to be. You know, no one wants to be here, but you know, to see their smile, you know, brightens our day and, and there. Winslow's desire to serve knows no borders. He has developed a meaningful relationship with the boys of Son of a Saint in New Orleans, Louisiana. We support boys who are, are deemed high risk because their fathers were either murdered or long-term incarceration, and we build them up so that they become independent, self-sufficient young men. I love being involved with them, you know, doing different activities with them, being kind of a, a role model, a mentor for them. You know, that, that's what's missing in their life. I just try to fill that void just a little bit at a time with each, each boy. How was the event that you had with him in uh, New Orleans during all stuff? It was great, you know, I took him to uh, one of the trampoline bouncy places and they were dunking, playing yeah. dodgeball, you know, swinging in the foam pits, all that. You wanna play? He grew up in somewhat of a similar situation so they can relate to him and see that here he is, he, he's achieved such great success. The mentors teach us how to be up to be men and letting him take out time for us is actually really generous of him. It is evident that Justice joyfully embraces the responsibility of mentoring and being an example for kids everywhere. You guys are the future. I just encourage y'all to keep working hard. I want to read you a post that you put on social media. As a mentor, I find myself learning more than I teach. How true is that for you? It's true. You know, I try to you know, teach them, you know, responsibility or, you know, good manners and, and all those things. And as you're, as you're teaching, you know, some of those things become a realization to you. It kind of helps you mature and evolve as a person. Well, I could sit here all day with you. More museum. You ready? Yeah. Let's go see some things. Welcome back to Inside the Heat. Rest assured, Justice Winslow, would have loved to have spent more time on the floor than on the mend in his second season of Miami Heat basketball. But that doesn't mean he was disconnected from the team whatsoever. Before we get back to the conversation of Orange Leather, let's continue our tour around the museum. We're going to go check out some David Reed work here. Mm -hmm. I understand this is... Uh, no relation to Willie Reed. No, no. no or, or Eric Reed. Okay. Uh, but we have Vice and Reflection. This is a definitely a feel to it. This is nice though because this one's so horizontal and then this one's just vertical. What I marvel at is what, what's in the mind? What's in the mind of an artist? It's almost the same as when you get locked in in a basketball game. Wow. You get in Stop the zone, it. you get in the flow. When they get going, they get going and, and, the, and the work just carries you wherever. I like the analogy, good work. I want to show you a neat exhibit they have over here by Hugh Locke. This is, oh, this is interesting. Hemmed in two. So it looks like a boat. Is it a boat? It's a boat and a carousel. But what's neat is you look in the center of some of these wheels, you have a crescent in some, a crucifix in others. This is a, a lengthy piece to Ooh, complete. Something else. I got more for you. We then headed outside to a hammock filled area called Netscape to discuss some nets of our own. The kind Justice makes a living putting a basketball through. Coaches know, management knows when a player is a winning player, and Justice Winslow is one of those rare guys. The steal and bucket by Winslow. He's mature, man. I mean, he, he was a rookie last year, and when I played against him, I couldn't tell. It's scary to think that he's only 20, and I mean, he's only going to get better. Winslow ramming it down. Winslow for three, got it. The home fan base hungry for a win. Winslow spinning and scoring. Very quickly, you were thrusted into leadership when training camp started. I caught myself looking around, and in my certain group, I was the only one that was here last year. So it's just about teaching them our system, and you know, I'm gonna be, try to be a coach and be a leader. Last year was was very different. I was a, a rookie, and with guys like D Wade and CB, you know, Amari, Joe, Lou, all those guys, I kind of got to just sit back and see what are they doing to get the guys motivated every day. How are they keeping? You know, the guys focus in a joyful, fun way. And this year, I'm learning even more. Get to the ball a little bit more in the flat. Oftentimes in sports, there's a saying that you don't have to get along with your teammates, just play well together. You and your coworkers really, really enjoy one another. Oh my God! Oh my God! Oh. You know, that's something that I kind of figured out at Duke. We really traveled everywhere together, and, and here I have a lot of, a lot of good friends. Hey, brother. It's a young team. We like to have fun. We like to joke around, and uh, we have a good time. Fresh into his sophomore year, a shoulder injury that required surgery shut Justice down for the season. 
But in a note to fans, he vowed to be back and said, quote, I will dedicate myself to the rehab process and find a way to support my teammates and make my team better. I've learned a lot about myself, a lot about the game, just being able to sit back and watch. That's what you make of it, and I think I've made you know, pretty good of it so far. Most people find rehab grueling and painful, and they don't want to get to it. How have you been able to fight that part of it all? I've just learned to, to just enjoy the pain. When I do go, get through this and you know, I'm running sprints, you know, I enjoy the pain. It's something that I embrace because that's the only true way you get better. That's nice, embrace the pain. That's a t-shirt. Somebody print that one up right now. Do you have some physical goals for yourself right now? Obviously get the shoulder better, you know, that's the, that's the first goal, but I would love just to, to, to trim some weight, also train the brain and really become, you know, not only physically tough, but mentally tough. Reading some books, watch some documentaries, things like that to, you know, keep my brain active. Have you found things about your game you want to implement as you start making your way back onto the court for basketball stuff? Just every little detail, watching other, you know, left-hand guys shoot. I have nothing to do on the sidelines, so I, I can pinpoint the smallest of details watching guys shoot, and so that ability to pick up on small details, I think is something that um, I've gained in these past two months. Despite the recent adversity, Justice has nothing but praise when he reflects on the past two years with the Heat. It's a first class, you know, organization, you know, from top to bottom. Everyone's focused on how can we better this team in any way, you know, shape or fashion, whether it's marketing, branding, or, you know, on the court to help the Miami Heat get back to a championship level. So it's a great culture, you know, surrounding the Miami Heat, and it's been a fun year and a half so far. Justice Winslow's injury plague second season will not change the philosophy within him. The Heat culture is already instilled that there's no ceiling on his greatness, and work is the only way back. And it's that hard work that he's already begun as he's taking steps to return to the hardwood. Thank you so much for watching this edition of Inside the Heat. I am Jason Jackson. I got a good one for this. I don't, I don't know if you're ready for it. Oh, yeah. Woo! I was a little concerned, to be honest. You made it. Oh, I think I'm stuck. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> <sighs> this makes you look a little slimmer, Jess. You know, you know what actually does? Exercise and diet. Uh, where's the English version? What's the numbers for? Probably not supposed to touch it. That's a good bit right there. Seriously, we didn't even, we didn't even write that one. Yep. <laughs>